You know, Ramon, there's never a dull moment in South African politics, huh? Like, a state of our politics is, oh, funny, I suppose, at best. Thought we'd have a chat about uh, three different things today. The first is uh, our new mayor in Johannesburg. Thank God I don't live in Johannesburg. The loss of the old DA mayor and uh, Malima's uh, supposed national shutdown. Hello, Ramon. Welcome to the show. Yes, thank you, Byron. Thank you, everyone. Yeah, so Joe has a new mayor. He's from Al Jamar. And Al Jamar, as we well know, is a satellite party of the ANC. Because the ANC realized about a decade ago that the colored vote was sort of up for grabs, right? A lot of colors are Muslims as well. And therefore, I'm not saying the ANC created Al Jamar, but let's say Al Jamar had a bit of help to be a credible force in South African politics. They only have one seat in parliament. And I think in Joburg, they have three seats. Now that they've disposed of the, the coalition, and that's a whole video entirely together, the interim mayor of Joburg is a guy from Al Jamar. And we thought he was pretty based because he had a tweet saying that he loves load shedding because it creates alternatives. So Byron and I thought, yeah, this guy's pretty good. And then unfortunately, he had this interview. You speak about service delivery. We know that there's a backlog in fixing the city's crumbling infrastructure. Yeah. I mean, in terms of priority areas, in your first 100 days in office, where are you looking at in terms of your, um, your tasks that you need to perform almost immediately? Um, I'm looking at potholes, right? Um, we, we need to identify systems that can assist human capital in terms of identifying those, those potholes. Remember, we are now on a digital era, and there's technolo the technology has, has advanced so much so that there is a technology where you can use and it will de deploy uh, the data into um, the person who can then allocate and, and deploy the human resources. And Byron, as you can see, the problem with potholes in Joburg is not that they're not fixed. The problem is the mayor had no idea where the potholes are, so he's creating systems through technology to find them. <laughs> And that's how he's going to fix them. It's pretty genius. <laughs> yeah, personally, I would have thought he would have just classed the whole of Johannesburg as one giant pothole and just said we need to uh, tarmac over the entire thing. Destroy the whole thing. Start again. New kid, upstart, got 0.9% of the national vote, and you still landed up as mayor. Democracy, eh? And uh, they ask him what he's actually going to do. And the guy seems about as coherent as a drowned fish. So at this point in time, it's... Uh, I don't know, man. Yeah. You you got some you got some tough days coming on your side of the world, don't you? Yeah, but the most important part, ladies and gentlemen, is that the coalition, the opposition bloc, actually say the DA, Freedom Front Plus, they lost to this, right? There's not even a coherent plan to take out the DA and all that sort of stuff, right? The 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 forces of darkness, the ANC, the EFF, the PA, haven't made plans. That's why they got this interim mayor so that a deal could be struck. Mm. The coalition lost to a, a block that didn't have a, a deal in place. What does that say about opposition politics in South Africa? It's sort of too scary to contemplate mm. at this stage. Like you're losing to no one <laughs> and nothing. Yeah, but let's, let's remind ourselves now, the reason that the, the DA initially won Johannesburg, if you cast your memory back, was because the EFF and the ANC were unable to come to an agreement on Ekruleni. And what actually happened was that the EFF said, we'll take Ekruleni, you'll take uh, Johannesburg, and we'll divvy up the cities like that. And obviously the ANC said, well, you know, technically we did get the larger vote, we should actually have both of them, and maybe you can come in as an, as an auxiliary. The EFF, it should also be noted, did not nominate somebody during that candidate sitting. The only nominations pit up were Al Jamar, Action SA, and the DA. And obviously, the EFF and the ANC had the numbers to get in their, their candidate from Al Jamar. So I suppose that in itself is, is questionable why the ANC and the EFF didn't even stand. I think we all know the answer for that, and that's because they have a larger strategy at play. Yeah, Byron, I think, I think you're right. This is like an interim state before the, the force of darkness, literally the force of darkness. Those who have imposed load shedding upon us uh, can have a stake and, and make a deal for themselves. So this Al Jamar candidate is going to use technology to fix potholes. Great. But he's not going to last very long because he's not actually the final form of what the ANC wants. But talking about the final form, Popolatze, the old mayor of Johannesburg, not old as in her age, but she was mayor of Joburg until last week. She now wants to run for the federal leader of the DA. But here's my conspiracy. Palatze is not going to win 
shocking, I know. But most importantly, what she's going to do, to me, it looks like, actually say got under her skin, right? They already said they congratulated her on her tenureship as mayor, they supported her, and the DA let her down. She's going to use this electoral campaign to become the DA leader to completely try turn the DA into ANC light, right? We're going to see the usual talking points, like the DA is a bit mm. racist, we need to be more diverse, we need to be more socialist, etc., etc., etc. She's not going to win a single branch member, she's not going to win a single vote anywhere. John Cena is already guaranteed to win it. When she loses that leadership race, she's going to go to Action SA. It is as simple as that. Now, you can blame Mpo Palazze and Action SA for this, or, in my personal opinion, you can blame both the DA and Action SA. Why do the mm. DA have these sort of people in their midst that they elevate to these positions, and then when push comes to shove, they just deflect and go somewhere else? There's something managerially very wrong with the DA, because this keeps on happening. No, but the answer is actually very clear. And the reason for that is, okay, let's look at what's going on here right now. Herman Mashab is all over Twitter basically saying he thinks that the way that she's been treated mirrors how he was treated when he left the DA and became his own, you know, his own action essay bullcrap, whatever he did. And as you know, when he decided to resign from being the mayor and he decided to walk away from the DA, everything was racist, everything was terrible. It's all about the color of his skin and blah, blah, blah. You can see similar patterns going on. And the reason that that Herman Mashaba is calling these, how should we say, these comparisons at the moment is because it's clear that he intends to rely on these comparisons when she joins him. She's been all over Twitter going, oh, I'm the first black woman and woman power and black power and we need to do more for the underclasses and the underprivileged. This all in the supposed party that highlights and promotes non-racialism. Like, she doesn't fit in with the typical talking points of DA policy. And this is the key issue. She doesn't fit in with the normal talking points of DA policy. These individuals very rarely do because they're not put in those positions because they align with DA policy. They put in those positions because they are typically thought to cater to a specific section of the voting population that the DA wishes to attract. And then mm. when these people don't align themselves with the actual policy that the DA wants them to enshrine, well, naturally, they push their individual aside and that individual goes, well, you must have only got me for one reason and that's my race because you wanted me to attract a certain race. Now you don't want me to attract them because, look, I don't agree with your policies. Therefore, racism. And this is a tried and tested formula. It goes over and over and over and over again in the DA. But but I think it's a problem with the DA, Byron. I know what you're saying. Like The characters are the ones that are most important. But fundamentally, they, they are undergirded by this institution, which is the DA, right? We would never accept in our business as someone to come in and talk shit about us and mm. when, when they fired for being useless, <laughs> right? No. Like there's something wrong with the DA in terms of managing these people. And I think that's biting them in the arse. That's the problem. But I, don't, but I don't think it is an issue with the DA. I think it's that the DA are attracting individuals on the basis that they think those individuals attract a certain vote. What they're not actually doing is they're not making sure that the policies and the, should we say, the heart and core of the beliefs are aligning with these individuals. Don't hire people that don't reflect the values you have. And if they don't reflect the values you have, absolutely train them and with propaganda it's like almost like uh, what's that movie called that one from the 70s where he opened his eyes and they keep dripping things into it clockwork orange clockwork orange that's the one if you want someone to believe in what you do you have to propagandize them and you have to have a team around them to make sure that they're not left in the lurch like Paul Palazzi mm. was not they're saying that she's innocent but it's a thing we have seen over and over again but all of this won't matter Byron because did you know on March 20th, which happens to be a very important date uh, for my family, on March 20th, apparently there's a national shutdown to end load shedding. So we're going to lock down. Fish. Yeah, we're going to lock down the entire economy because we're upset about load shedding. What the hell's going on there? Yeah. So this is actually the clip that's been circulating around everywhere that Julius Malima is calling for a national shutdown. There will be no school. There will be no university. There will be no factory. There will be no bus, no taxi, unless they are taking protesters to the picket lines. There will be no truck to reach us bay. There will be no train to reach us bay. There will be no big roads that will be operating on the 20th of March, unless it's emergency services. 
and we are not threatened by any security because we do this peacefully. It's our right. And if they want to come and violate our rights, they will find us ready. I don't think anybody's told Julius. There is a chicken shortage. You may struggle to get the protesters out there, my friend. Mm. But uh, all, what he is saying is that uh, he intends to shut down the entire economy. He said all progressive unions, all progressive forces, which basically means all socialist wankers, go out there and cause as maximum amounts of disruption as possible because, you know, anti-capitalism and some other bull crap. And uh, he seems to think that people actually agree with him. So the first thing I suppose we should really discuss, Ramon, is, uh, and we covered this last year, in a number of the so-called national shutdowns that occurred. I mean, they were happening virtually every other week. Yes. And we said numerous times, no one gave a shit. And guess what, Ramon? No one gave a shit. So yeah, is anybody going to give a shit about this one? Yeah, but this time it's Julius Byron. This time it's different, don't you know? A 10% party of grifters are calling for national shutdown. Why wouldn't people believe mm. in this one? I mean, the ANC couldn't hold a shutdown. The biggest union in the country couldn't hold a proper shutdown last year. Julius can. If he can do it, no one can. Ooh, that rhymes. Uh, at the end of the day, I, I, I think this, this, clown, this clown is going to find that he uh, he's going to go out there on the 20th of March. Everybody's going to be like, was there a shutdown? I couldn't tell. It'd be like there were protests and everybody else would be like, nah, mate, that's that's called Tuesday. That's, called Tuesday, that's not called yeah. protests. Well, I think, you know, what is March 20th anyway of this year? In terms of I, the day. I think it's... But isn't it a public holiday? Think, no, March 21st. But So he wants to go before a public holiday, the day before a public holiday, which is going to be a Monday, and he said, no, national shutdown. It's like, mate, half the country will be on holiday anyway <laughs> because Tuesday's a public mm-hmm. holiday. So they'll be like, yeah, I'll take a day off. They watch. He will claim credit. Look, you see, the economy shut down, guys. Not because of you, though. You'll be like, no, people went on a holiday. Exactly. Dickhead.